Why do you think there is this lack of progress in Australia? Is it fear? Because it seems like the GFC has hit us late, like we thought we'd escaped mm, it. And mm. there seems to be a lot of fear in 2012. I, I don't attribute it to fear, to be honest. Mm. I, I attribute it to a lack of um, priority. Okay, I mean, there's only two businesses in Australia, right? There's resources and, and real estate, okay? And I think in many ways, the Australian culture and, and climate, especially business climate, has been kind of self-fulfilling doom in that, oh, uh, well, Silicon Valley has all the high-tech companies and Hollywood has all the movies and blah, blah, blah. And yet, if you, if you go back to things like Google Maps, I mean, Google Maps was built by an Australian company. It was an Australian company, okay? There are plenty of examples of globally relevant companies that started in Australia. There's pl plenty of examples of media companies, entertainment te companies, technology companies. But what happens is, is that you can, starting up is no problem. You can get a bunch of punters, you can get a bunch of government grants. But God forbid you become commercialized, <laughs> okay? God forbid you need to go out and raise 10 or 20 million dollars, okay? Which is in America exactly where they want you to get. Okay, that's where the VCs and the private equity people will go mad, all right? And they'll really look at you because you know you're profitable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here, there's just no, there's no vehicles, okay? Well, what's the answer? I think a proper fund. I think a proper VC fund in this country. I mean, look, I would challenge the highest net worths and the big funds and the superannuation funds and the investment bankers and the fund managers. I would challenge them to come up with a, a proper $250 million fund, not just that has the money in it, okay? There's funds like that all over Australia for mining, right? But not just that has the money in it, but behaves like an American fund, okay? One meaning, you know, yes or no. Okay, if it's yes, you're gonna get a term sheet within a week. If you get a term sheet in within a week, it's 45 days of due diligence. If you don't pass the due diligence, sorry. If you do, you're funded. Now, I'm being general, but anybody who's been to the U.S. and ran around Sand Hill Road or ran around with the private equity people knows that you will know at the end of your first meeting whether they're interested or not. And if they're interested, there's follow-up immediately. Immediately. So I don't think it's just a factor of the money. It's a commitment to be able to move at speed. Okay, and I'm not talking about being foolish, all right? But you'd have to back this fund up with a bunch of analysts who actually know the high-tech industry, actually know medtech, biotech. I mean, there's, there's some good people here, but try to grow a Facebook here. Try to grow a Twitter here, right? Try to grow a Google here, okay? I, I don't know, but I haven't seen a lot of tech analysts. So if you have, you know, if somebody sweeps a, a metal detector over a piece of ground and they get a blip that's gold, you know, all of a sudden, every billionaire in this country will be there with a proposition and there'll be a billion analysts and they'll tell you within 20 minutes whether there's gold down there. But what do you have to do in this country to prove that you're a sustainable, scalable business in the high tech sector? Has a lot of our talent gone overseas? Oh God, yeah. You, look, walk around, walk around University Avenue in Palo Alto and you'll hear Aussie voices all over the place. It, the analog is what happened in the 90s with actors and actresses, okay, in Hollywood. Everyone left. I mean, name one major Australian actor that lives here, right? That's happening now with high tech. They're all leaving. They're not even starting up businesses here. It's not even worth it. It takes too long, right? So they just get on a plane, they go to Palo Alto, or they go to LA, or they go to San Francisco, hunker down, network, meet people, have exposure, not just to money, but to talent, to advice, to mentoring, right? And bang. They're up and going. I mean, I'm amazed. Every time I go to LA, San Francisco, or Palo Alto, I bump into Aussies all over the place, and they're loving it. And that's wonderful. They have a right to do that. That's great. But if my son wanted to grow up and be an entrepreneur, I would like him to have the opportunity to choose to have his home be Australia. Right? I don't want him to be forced to go someplace else because there's no opportunity.